where you pierce for the wrong jewelry. Coming up next on Body Piercing Basics, episode number 39, coming up right now. So don't go anywhere. <laughs> are new to the channel my name is Dave O I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994 I'm the owner and operator of the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located here in Des Moines Iowa inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo so I'm talking to you at a level of expertise as someone who basically has chosen the correct jewelry to pierce numerous times and help people through that process of choosing the right jewelry for them so, you have gotten a piercing, I'm guessing, and you've gone on the internet and everything you see says, oh no, you should never, ever, 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 ever get pierced with that type of jewelry in that particular piercing. So now you're freaking out and you're deciding, trying to decide whether or not you should change the jewelry. One thing I will tell you right from the start is do not change the jewelry unless there is an issue. If it's jewelry that is just going to cause a problem, then it might be a good idea to change it and be proactive. But in most, most cases, if it's kind of just a minor thing or minor difference, it's best to leave that jewelry in until it completely heals and then put in correct jewelry. Keep in mind, regardless of the jewelry that's in there, if it's done correctly and you baby it enough and et cetera, it will probably heal. The problem is, is it'll probably take longer to heal and it probably will be more prone to problems. Before we get too far down the rabbit hole, I should probably explain to those that are new to piercing, there are basically three separate styles that are predominant or shapes in body piercing. The first style is circular. This would be something like a ring or a circular barbell, often called a horseshoe. The second one would be curved barbells, also referred to as banana bars. They're shaped kind of like a banana, thus the name. What they are is a quarter turn. It's not kind of, it's not like a 180, it's more flat. Third type would be standard post jewelry or um, straight jewelry. This comes in the style with body piercing of things like nostril screws, uh, elbins, labre studs, and of course, straight barbells. Those are the three most common styles. So let's talk a little bit about anatomy. I won't go too far down the rabbit hole with this one because it can be really complicated. And the truth is everybody has different anatomy. So yours might not be the same as Jane's, and Jane's is definitely not the same as yours. You're your own unique little flower. Celebrate that. Really, celebrate it. Anyway, um, there's kind of, when we were talking about pure sayings, there's kind of basically two extremes and then everything in the middle. The extremes being piercings that are lobed or what I like to refer to as cliff piercings, where both sides are very, very flat. Um, there's various different levels. There's some that it's flat on one side and it's kind of curved a little bit on the other side. This would be piercings like, of course, low piercings, upper ear cartilage, helix piercings, uh, trachis piercings, nostrils, septums, tongue piercings, uh, nipples. They're kind of in that middle part depending on how developed the nipple is, but they're pretty commonly referred to as a flip, cliff piercing. Navels, eh, they're kind of on the other side, and those are hillside. Basically, the area is more rounded or not as pronounced. It's more flat and rounded. Some examples of that would be things like your snug, anitrachus, rooks, dapes, eyebrows lip piercings to a degree, especially if you do them correctly, which is like this. Navel piercings, which are kind of a rounded version of it and various other ones. And nipples kind of fall on that ground depending on your anatomy. So when we're picking out the jewelry that works best in these types of environments, we kind of think about roughly about four to five major things. The first one being is how can I position the jewelry in there that it's going to have the most resistance, it's going to be deep enough, that it's going to be easier for your body to heal 
a tunnel of tissue around the jewelry than it is to push it completely out of the body. Because your body really just wants to push it out. It doesn't care about you wanting to have that there. It really would just like to rather reject it and get rid of it. It's less work. It's lazy like everything in life. Who knew? So when we're picking something, if it's a heel, we need something usually a little bit more curved that's going to go a little bit deeper into that tissue and form more to the, to the shape of the tissue. We're doing cliffs or lobal type piercings. Something straight through it is going to work pretty darn well, though rings can work too. As long as the ring is large enough that the area is flat inside that piercing, which I'll get a little bit more into that here in a second. The other thing we want to consider when picking out jewelry for a particular piercing is we want to consider how much contact that style of jewelry is going to have depending on what it's, how pronounced it is. For example, um, a ring is going to take up a lot more room than a labre stud. So a ring is going to come in contact with a lot more stuff, thus more prone to problems. However, in some cases where it fits, where a ring is going to fit well into the body, it might be a better option because of the next thing. And that's swelling. Swelling occurs in all piercings. It's a reaction to the trauma. It's also your body pumping in blood to try to seal off the wound as quickly as possible and get that healing process jump started. And also, you know, fight of infection. Piercing swell and piercing swelling varies from person to person. You have some people that say, no, nah, I didn't notice any swelling at all because it only swelled a little bit. Then you have other people where it's like it was three times its normal size. I thought I had a mutation and it was scary and awful and everything else. The thing with post jewelry is you have a limited amount of space, space to work with. The same thing with curved barbells. Rings give you a little extra room to work with during that initial couple of days. And then as the, as it subsides, we'll be almost flat enough for it. So that's the one advantage that rings kind of have over post jewelry. They give you a little bit more room to a degree if they're big enough. The next thing we want to consider is how much movement that particular style of jewelry is going to get. The more the jewelry moves through the piercing during the healing process, the longer it's going to take to heal. Also, the more prone it is to infection. So, for example, a ring can slide through a piercing and it can also kind of swing. So it's going to have a lot more movement than a standard straight barbell. The same thing goes for curved jewelry. Curved jewelry will flop back and forth like this, like the swing. And it will tend to lock into place back and forth. And it does not feel good. And it can also move this way. Standard jewelry or post jewelry usually can only slide one direction back and forth. So it's less likely to move around during the healing process. So in most cases, it's a better option when it can be used correctly and when the anatomy dictates it. The last thing you want to consider is what's going to look good. Of course, if you're piercing something and it's going to cause the jewelry to be out to like, like here and look goofy, it's not going to look as good as a subtle piece of jewelry that fits well into the anatomy. Part of that has to do with sizing, Part of that has to do with the style because the style always dictates the size. So now you have all this knowledge. Should you change the jewelry? Shouldn't you change the jewelry? What have you? Why did your piercer, let's answer one specific question. Why did your piercer pierce you with the wrong jewelry in the first place? A couple of different theories uh, you can consider. The first one being is they just don't know better. They were taught that way. And they refuse to get on the internet and do minor searches to find information on what works best or what the latest techniques and et cetera are. However, the real reason may be is because stocking jewelry is kind of difficult, expensive, 
in time consuming. Part of the problem is, is that it's much easier to have, let's say 200 curved barbells, uh, 16 gauge, seven sixteenths, for example. It's much easier to have 200 of those in stock at all time than it is to have 200 curved barbells, 16 gauge, seven sixteenths, curved barbells, labre studs in barbells. Regardless of whether or not the jewelry that works best works best for you, it's just very expensive for them to stock all that stuff. And because jewelry is really driven by fashion a lot of times, it's more profitable to stock a bunch of fling, bling, bling, fancy ends and all this other crap and weird colors than it is to just have the proper jewelry in in the first place. Because that stuff tends to sell more and sell for a higher profit. So, talk to your piercer. Next time you go into the shop and you go, hey, I want my conch done, and they pull out a curved barbell, and then you come in a couple weeks later and you say, hey, I want to get my nipple done, and they pull out the same curved barbell, ask them why they don't have different jewelry styles in stock and why they suggest that particular type of jewelry. Well, that's pretty much everything I have to say on that subject today. If you feel like I've confused you more than you started with, please leave a comment. I'm confused. Um, I do answer them on a regular basis. I'm happy to answer your questions about jewelry, um, style, and etc. cetera. Uh, also, please, if you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up, especially if you learned something. Maybe you learned something different than what you knew before. If you'd like to see more of this, which I don't understand why you would not, of course, hit the subscription button, uh, hit the notification bell so that you're ringed every single time we post something, and check out our merch store. We have very similar t-shirts and other kinds of fun things there. And you look stylish, like I know you want to. But till next time, hope all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see if your body piercing needs in the future. Have a great day, everybody. It's your decision.